If you're a Mac user, Alfred is probably the best app you can get. It has both a paid and a free version, but Alfred is 100% worth getting even if you only use the free version. In this video, I'm only focusing on workflows, which is a paid feature, but if you'd like to see a video on how I use all of the free features, let me know in the comments. So let's get started. So the first workflow I use, and it might be the one that I use the most, is for my password manager, which is 1Password. I've been using 1Password for a ton of reasons, but the main two reasons are how nicely integrated it is with the Apple ecosystem, and secondly, because of Alfred. So if I toggle on Alfred, and I can just type in 1P, it'll take me to all of my passwords inside 1Password. I can type in the one that I want, and then if I press enter, it's gonna take me to this website, in this case, chess.com. But then we can do another thing, which is what I use most of the time, which is we can hold command, and then you can see here, it has an option for view in one password. And then I can just drag and drop the username and password for those few websites that one password doesn't autofill. And one password is way more than a password manager. I store all kinds of stuff in it. So I frequently use this to fetch something in one password, like my bank details or a software license. So in this case, I would just come into Alfred, type in 1P for 1Password, and then Alfred for my Alfred Lifetime license. I would then just hold the command key and it would take me to that exact license inside 1Password. And I use this all the time. For instance, sometimes I need my driver's license or my passport ID, and it's all inside 1Password and I access it so easily because of Alfred. All right, so this next one is called Calculate Anything. And as the name implies, it can literally calculate anything. It does the obvious basic calculations that you'd find in any calculator app, but it also converts between all sorts of units, such as inches, pounds, centimeters, kilos, and all that. I work with both the metric and the imperial system, so this saves me a ton of time. For instance, I can come here and I can type four feet to inches. If I want four feet to centimeters, I can also do from pounds to grams or to kg. You know, you get the point, but it also works as its own currency converter. So I can do any conversion such as, you know, 10 GBP to euros. You know, I can do a thousand Thai baht to USD. It's gonna give me all of that and it's all inside calculate anything. It's pretty amazing. Which leads me to my next workflow, which is simply called currency converter. And you might be thinking, why do I need this if I have the calculate everything workflow? But this is very different to the previous one as this one is meant to have a default currency to always convert back to. For instance, I can go to Alfred and I can type in any euro amount and it's gonna give me the dollar value. Same with say the Thai bot just to keep things consistent. And you can change the default currency to be whatever you want. And this is super useful because 99% of the time that I'm looking up a conversion, all I wanna know is the dollar value as that's my primary currency. So although this is useful, it's not something that Calculate Anything can do. It just saves you an extra step. This next one is called Temporary Email, and that's exactly what it does. This is useful if you want to access a website that wants your email, and you want to give your real one because you don't want to get spammed or for privacy concerns, etc. So I'm actually going to give you an example, and I'm over here in just a Google page, but let's pretend that this is a website that's asking me for my email. And all I need to do is press Alfred, go into Temporary Email, and when I press Enter, you can see that it typed in an email for me and it opened up a new tab with an inbox waiting for me to receive that exact email. And as you can see, we have an update every 10 seconds. And when you click on it, it tells you that all emails are deleted after one hour. Next up, we have two different workflows that kind of go hand in hand. And the first one is called book search. And the way that this workflow works is that you go on Alfred and you type in BK and you can change this command in the workflow settings. And now you can search for books in Goodreads to quickly find the rating of any book. So for instance, I'm currently reading Family Upstairs, so I can just type that in. And as you can see over here, it has a rating of 3.97. But it doesn't end here. You can then press Command and Enter, and now you have all of these different options. And the best part of this workflow is that because it connects to your Goodreads account, you can add stuff to shelves or to want to read all straight from Alfred. I use this all the time when I'm scrolling Twitter or Reddit and I come across a book recommendation and I decide on the spot if I wanna add it to my shelf or I wanna you know, save for later, maybe go see the author's page and see if there's someone I resonate with. And it's very, very helpful. On a similar note, there's another workflow called Movies and TV Show Search, and this lets you search for a movie or a show. So I just come here to Alfred, and I type in movie, and I can search for something like The Godfather. And now, as you can see, we have The Godfather, all of them, and I can press the first one, and now it's going to show me all the reviews across all of these different websites, including a direct link to watch a trailer on YouTube. And the same goes for a TV show. Just instead of typing in movie, you would type in TV, followed by any TV show, then you press enter, and then you're gonna have the same thing before a TV show. 
This next one is called Power Thesaurus, and it allows you to search for synonyms and antonyms. So if I'm writing something, and I know I've said the same word a couple times, I can just come here and find a synonym. Then I can just come here to Alfred, type S-Y-N for synonym, and then also. And it's going to give me a bunch of synonyms for the word also. And you can also search for antonyms, just type A-N-T instead, and then type the word. So in this case, we can use happy as an example. And then when you press enter, we're going to have all these antonyms for the word happy. I use a synonym function way more than antonym, but it's good to have both either way. This next one is called time zones. And as the name suggests, it's an easy way to see what the time is in a group of countries that you've selected. So in here, I can type in TZ for time zones. And now you're going to see all these different time zones, which are the ones that I'm interested in. And I use this a lot to plan calls or meetings with friends and colleagues in other countries. And if I ever want to add another time zone, such as Austin, Texas, I can just come here, type in time zones, and then we have an option to add a new city. And I can just type in Austin, and here we have Austin, Texas right here. So then you wait a couple seconds, come back to Alfred, type in TZ, and now we have Austin right here. Next up, we have the Obsidian workflow. And I saw that Brian Jenks did a long video about it some time ago, and he did a great job going over all the functions. And I don't think I'd be adding anything new, so I'm going to link to his video instead. You can find it in the description below. This next one is very simple, and you might have seen me use it before, and it's called Emoji Search. Once you add it to your workflows, you just come here and press E to toggle on Emoji Search, and then you type in exactly what it is that you want to use. And then once you have it, you press Enter, and then you can copy and paste it, whatever you want. Before we go on to some honorable mentions, we have a last one and it's called Audio Switch. I think this is absolutely essential if you're constantly switching between different input and output sources. So to use it, you just come into Alfred and you can type in input and then we have an option for input audio switches. And in here you can see that I can change between all four of these. Right now I'm using my mic, which is connected to my Wave XLR over here. And then you can do the same for output. Just type in output and then you have a list of your devices that you can output to. All right, so now it's time for some honorable mentions. And the first one is called last changed files. And the way this works is that you come to Alfred and you simply type last and Alfred will show you the last files you're working on. And this also includes last downloaded. So if you just downloaded something from the web, simply type last and you can access them right away. This next one is called browser tabs. And this is also a super simple one. If I come here to Alfred and I type in tabs, if I have any browser tabs at all opened, it's gonna show up here. And this works with all of the major browsers. This next one is GitHub. If you use GitHub all the time, I'd even count this one as a must, as it'll take you to any repo you want with a couple keys pressed. If you've been following my Obsidian videos, not too long ago, I made one on the template plugin. And for that video, I kept coming to the template repo, which I just come here, GH Templater, and I can find it right here. This next one is called Coffee Coffee. And this is just a very easy way to prevent your Mac from turning off. Just toggle Alfred and you type in coffee, and then you type in the minutes that you want to stop your computer from sleeping. So in this case, I can do two hours, so 120. And when I press enter, it won't sleep for two hours. There's also a few other workflows that I don't particularly use, but I know they're very popular, such as the mini Spotify player, which lets you control Spotify directly from Alfred. There's also a Google Maps workflow, which is very popular as well. Tiny URL that lets you shorten URLs straight from Alfred and the list goes on. You can also write your own workflow and share them with the community if you want. Alfred 5 was just released and making a workflow has never been easier. So let's now look at where you can find workflows. And there's four different places that you can use. The first one is the Alfred official website, which links to the download locations of the most popular workflows. Secondly is Packel, and third is Pacmax. Both of them are very nice and have a great list of major workflows. And lastly, as always, you can find pretty much everything on GitHub. And I've just come across a nice curated list of Alfred workflows that someone put together on GitHub. So I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the description as well. So now that you're using Alfred to its full potential, you can do the same to your Todoist by watching this video right here. I use the free version and it completely runs my life. That's gonna be it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.